Good afternoon, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good evening, good evening, good evening. We're, we're still in Second Chronicles. And in this chapter there is a there is a twist to all that we've been studying before. And the twist comes with the king. All right. And this king happens to be uh, King Hezekiah. All right. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to start at uh, chapter 29, verse 1. And it reads as such. I'll read verse 1 through 5. We could discuss it. And if someone else would like to read 5 to 10, and then we'll discuss it some more. But there are some interesting parts in here in this, this chapter that just jumped out at me, and maybe they'll jump out at, at uh, you as well. But verse 1 read, goes on to read, Hezekiah became king when he was 25 years old, and he reigned 29 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Abijah, the daughter of Zechariah, and he did what was right in the sight of the Lord according to all that his father David had done. In the first year of his reign, in the first month, he opened the doors of the house of the Lord and repaired them. Then he brought in the priests and the Levites and gathered them in the east square and said to them, Hear ye, hear me, Levites, now sanctify yourselves and sanctify the house of the Lord God of your fathers and carry out the rubbish from the holy place. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> So as you can see here, the moment Hezekiah becomes king, Hezekiah has an immediate agenda. He didn't like what was going on previously with his father. So now he's taken an interest in the house of the Lord. And he goes in and he opens the house of the Lord and he begins to carry out everything that is not, uh, that shouldn't be in there that had been brought in by the previous king. And so here he is, he's gathering it all out. And when he brings it all out, notice the first thing that the Bible says is that he did what was right in the sight of the Lord. So it's funny that he didn't take after his father, but instead he stepped right in to wanting to do what was right in the eyes of God. Amen. Amen. And that's a choice he had to make. And it's a choice that we all have to make, you know, whether you're a believer or a non-believer. Uh, <clears throat> we are all aware that there is a God. Mm -hmm. and, and maybe not everyone believes in the same God, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's why we have the different beliefs that are out there. But you know that there's a God because just nature itself tells you that there's a God. There are some things that just can't be explained because man didn't create it. Amen. Mm -hmm. And so then we're given the choice to either believe in God or not believe in God. So Hezekiah wants to do right in the eyes of God. So he opens up the temple and then he tells the priests and the Levites, as you can see in verse five, he says to sanctify yourselves. And that's the process that we do each and every day mm -hmm. is to sanctify ourselves. We have to, there's a, a old saying uh, as I was coming out up, they used to say, get right church, get right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's what we have to do. It's a constant thing. No, none, none of us is perfect. Uh, I stand before you. I have my flaws. I have my, my, uh, my times where I don't always get it right. Uh, but it's it's a, a perfecting, and the Bible says we we have not arrived, nor are we perfect, but we're being perfected until yeah. the coming of the Lord. So mm -hmm. we're going to make mistakes, but the one thing that we do have to always be mindful of is is the sanctification part. Mm -hmm. That's setting ourselves apart from those things that will cause us to become contaminated with the things of the world. And first John says, love not the world, nor the things of the world, because those are the things that desecrate us, you know? So we have to practice the separation part. So he told the priest and the Levite to, to sanctify themselves. And then he says to sanctify the house of the Lord. Anybody have anything? Uh, I don't know if I went too far, but I just remember something and then I looked it up and it says uh second um uh, Kings eighteen it was we were just talking about how Hezekiah was uh 
was one of the good kings, correct? Right. At this point. Um, like you said, we also mess up, you know, and we shall see. And anyway, Hezekiah says right here that he did really good because at one at one point he removed the high places and broke the sacred 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 pillars, cut down the wooden images and broke into pieces the bro the bronze surface ser serpent that Moses had made. For until those days the children of Israel burnt incense incense to it and called it Nah Nahushtan. I just wanted to say that. Mm -hmm. And you're absolutely right. Well, well, some right. of them didn't stop didn't uh, stop the people from worshiping in the high places and did not remove the images and the uh, idols from the high mm -hmm. places. They continued to worship in those areas where he was not allowing that. He right. Didn't, and, didn't so, come about it. and so what uh, King Hezekiah was doing, King Hezekiah was now starting the first um, revival. Mm -hmm. He was starting a revival uh, with the children of Israel. And we're going to read that it go, he goes a little farther than just with the children of Israel. Not only is he starting uh, the first revival or the greatest revival in Judah's history by starting that project of clearing out the house of the Lord. And it's like us, sometimes we have to do some cleaning of our house. You know, you have to get rid of the clothes you can't wear anymore mm -hmm. and, and stuff that you just don't use is there and you, <laughs> and you need to start cleaning the house. Some people call it spring cleaning. Mm -hmm. Well, he's doing, you could say, a, a spring cleaning. And verse 6, anyone like to read from 6 to 10? Okay, I'll go on. I'll do it. Okay. Go, I'll go. Do it. Dr. J, go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. For our fathers have trespassed and done evil in the eyes of the Lord our God. They have forsaken him, have turned their faces away from the dwe from dwelling places of the Lord and turned their backs on him. They have also shut up the doors of the vestibule, oh, or bowls, vestibule, bowls. But, but, I mean, I'm sorry. Put out the lamps and have not burned incense or offered burnt offerings in the holy places of the God of Israel. Therefore, the wrath of the gosh, the Lord, fell upon. I'm going to take this mask off. <laughs> Therefore, the wrath of the Lord fell upon Judah and Jerusalem, and He had given them upon to trouble, to desolation, for to jeering, as you see with your eyes. For indeed, because of this, our father have fallen by the sword, and our sons, our daughters, and our wives are in captivity. Now it is my heart to make a covenant with God, I mean with the Lord God of Israel, that his fierce wrath may turn away from us. Notice what, what is happening here. He is reminding the people that the reason why we have been having the trouble that we're having is because of what our fathers did in the past. And the only way we're going to stop the wrath of God from coming upon us is we must change our ways. Mm -hmm. And so now he's setting a precedence as to what we need to do. And he's reminding them. Notice you read it in verse, verse uh, 7. They have also shut up the doors of the vestibule, put the lamps, put out the lamps, and have not burned incense or offered burnt offering to the holy place, to the God of Israel. Mm -hmm. They stopped doing what they were doing, which was not a ritual. It was what God had called them to do in order to honor him. Mm -hmm. So they stopped doing that. And he's reminding them of all of these things that this is what we used to do. Mm -hmm. Now we're no longer doing that. We need to get back to what we're, we, we've been called to do. And so he's reminding them of that. And so now if you look at verse 10, which is one of those things that jumped out to me, he says, now it is in my heart to make a covenant with the Lord, with the Lord God of Israel, that his fierce wrath may turn away from us. Now he's willing to make a covenant with God. You know those promises we make, and I've made a couple of them uh, in my younger years. God, if you get me out of this one, mm -hmm. I promise you I won't do that I'm anymore. About a thousand. Man, I tell you a lot. And whether, whether you believe it or not, that's a covenant that you're, yeah, you're saying right. right there. You're promising God something. If God will do something, then you'll do that. And that's what God started off 
uh, way back in Genesis, if you do this, then I'll do that. And then in Deuteronomy, he says, says, says mm -hmm. the same yeah. thing. If you do this, then I'll do that. And that's a covenant. It's a, an agreement between two parties. Mm -hmm. And so now he says, it is in my heart to make this covenant. The, the thing that jumped out to me is, is he said, it's in my heart, which means that he may have been pondering on this because he took over at age 25. Mm -hmm. He may have been pondering this all these years as he watched his father and his grandfather and all of these, the stuff that was going on. And he was, you know, we got to do better. Come on, Minister And Joey. one of the things, when you say his grandfather and his father, I'm reminded that his mother was a good mother. So I want to pull a woman in there, too. Yes. Uh, uh, yes. I'm sorry. Yes. Come on now. But the, the mother was really somebody who instilled a lot of good things in him about uh, the Lord. Yes. So he had some good nurturing from her that actually, that he, that took him to this point. Yes. I'm, I'm not negating the fact that the father and the grandfather, but hey. No, I, no. The, the mama was called. The verse, the verse identifies her. Exactly. And not in there, everything we read yeah. where it identifies the mother. Uh-huh. So she was identified in that, and you're you're most likely right. I didn't uh, she to pop was, it out, you know. No, she was. You're most likely right. She was probably reminding him, "See what your daddy doing? That's not what you should be doing." Mm -hmm. You know, we used you to do this, but look what your dad is you doing. Know. You know, yeah. yeah. So for it to be in his heart, he must have been reminded of of it. Come on, Pastor. What is so awesome with this is this is a king of a nation. Yes. The leader of a nation that's doing all of this here. And that, that's important for a whole nation to be able to reap the blessings uh, when the king is trying to do the right thing and yes. getting everyone else to do it. What if America was like that? Yes. If we had a president that yes. would do that. Yes. What if America was like that, that yes. had a the leader that would be the one that would realize that we've gone astray and to try to get us back on the right track? Yes. How much more would America be yes. able to reap the blessings? Heal our nation. Yes. Come on, Pastor Fulton. Yes. I, I don't know what president it was. I'm going to say Hoover, but it may not have been J.R. Hoover. One of those presidents sometime back used to make mention of God and how we should be living right. I can't remember which president it was. Was it was it J.R. Hoover? No, Roosevelt. 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 Delano yes. Roosevelt, Franklin yes. Delano. Yes, yes, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. He used to talk about God all the time and this nation needs to, to serve God. Yeah. So but then look how far <laughs> after. Well, y'all, the reason I brought that up, I don't know if y'all noticed it, and Minister Phil talked about it the other day, about our president signing a law that's gone really contrary to what God has said. Right. You know, and then that, that happened today. I think he signed it today, yeah. I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, and that just shows you the depravity the of this nation and where we are in our thinking right now. Mm -hmm. we're, we're, just, we're just falling for any and everything that goes contrary to the word of God, you know? I heard some things but we don't have to let we don't have to let our our past, our great parents, or whatever, our great parents or grandma, or whatever it is, we gonna stop it right there. Mm -hmm. We gonna stop it right there for our grandkids. We having our nephew. We having don't matter what it is. We gonna stop it. Yes. Because I I decided when I um when I accepted the Lord like oh, like everybody said then asked the Lord something I complete everything I told the Lord I was going to do and I stopped it mm -hmm. I stopped it mm -hmm. from my family my generation mm -hmm. to able to come wherever my grandparents or my dad or where it is I stopped it. With the help of the Lord, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and we can do that today. Right. But we just have to know what word and what to use to to make for our generation. Don't go through those things. Yeah. Don't matter what it is. And you're absolutely right. Uh, we have to take a stand as believers. 
uh, there's a passage while you were speaking that came up in my spirit. It says that the kingdom of God suffers violence, yes. but the violent take it by force. Mm -hmm. So you're right. Uh, you can stop those things and those generational curses, but you have to take a stand mm -hmm. in order to stop them. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're seeing here with King Hezekiah. Yes, yes. He is taking a stand mm -hmm. against those things that they were practicing before he became king. And now he's saying, we bringing a halt to this thing. We're going to get right in the eyes of God. He didn't just himself decide this. He's deciding this for the whole nation, as you yes. said, Pastor. Mm -hmm. For the whole nation. And we're going to find out later that he's going to call the nation together. Yes. And when he calls the nation together, he decrees to them, this is what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. Come on. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry, Sister Ron. That's okay. I think it's going to take more than the president, though, because he can't do it on himself. They can override, but I think it's going to take all of them. Uh, it's going to take all of us. Right. Yeah. I agree. It's going to take more than the president, but for the president to make a statement and a vow to the Lord, being the leader, I know the Lord would move on his behalf because he's the person that God has here, has here as a leader. Those others that are opposing and they oppose against him, they will be opposed against the Lord because he's calling upon the Lord. So I, I really think that if he made a statement and truly in his heart would try would want to do this and make that statement, I think the Lord will move on his behalf. I and I think you. things will really, you will see different than what's happening right now. Yes. What's happening now is horrible. Yes. And I believe God would start to turn in those mm -hmm. people, turn those folks' hearts that were against him uh, towards him and to support him, mm -hmm. really. Uh, but somebody has to take a stand. Mm -hmm. And until someone takes a stand, like uh, Minister Ophelia said, uh, it's just going to keep going. And we can't, as believers, we can't become intimidated about what if, mm -hmm. or what if this happens. We have to be firm in our conviction about what we're going to stand for and what we won't stand for. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't have to beat anybody over the brow with what you believe, but when you make a stand for what you believe, you have to stand no matter what. Mm -hmm. And you have to be willing to face the consequences. Mm -hmm. That's the part I believe that most believers are backing up off of the consequences. <laughs> you know, well, what if I lose my job? Well, I, if you, I believe, this is me, I don't work anymore, but I believe, and my wife has said that one time before, I think we were in Bible study or Sunday school, when you're right, like Hezekiah's heart is right towards God, when you're right and you're standing for what you believe, even if they fire you or let you go, God has another job yes. already for you. Mm -hmm. But you have to stand and say, okay, well, you know, so what if I lose this job? I'm still going to stand on my principles. I believe that we have to remember that God is our source and everything else mm -hmm. is resources. Huh. And... Yeah. God can move and change resources around any way he feels mm -hmm. or sees fit. So it's, again, go back to your faith in God and trust in him. And what his word says is that he's going to provide. You shall not want. I'll provide all your needs and really trust in him. And you're, you're absolutely right. You get no disagreement with, with mm -hmm. uh, about that. Remembering that God is your source and not your job. And most people think that their job is their source instead of God. And that's why they give in to the pressures that, that are being tried to apply. Even sometimes, even like, I want to use me. I decided my family was not going to be the generation, not going to church, not serving the Lord. And I decided to go one day to Panama and cut the out to them. Cut it down. Put it on fire. And that's what we need to do is put it on fire. You know, but sometimes some of your family want to be against you. But it's up to you to stand up to them too. Mm -hmm. Because I stand up to my brother. Mm -hmm. And when I stand up to him, he might have to shut his mouth up. Mm -hmm. But it's not to be no cursing. No word out the word, thus the power of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Because this is what I said, this is what it want to be. Mm -hmm. And up to today, my brother, 
my 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 two brothers, one older than me, way older than me. I stand up to him, and I stand up to the one more older too. Mm -hmm. I stand up to them, mm -hmm. and I stand up to the another one too because they say no the Bible more than me. Mm -hmm. But I say yes, you you your God you serve, mm -hmm. not the one I serve. Mm -hmm. Your one what you serve tell you you know God. Mm -hmm. But you don't know the one I serve. Mm -hmm. And this is what I say, and this is what it want to be. And the mother came there. And that's the stand that you have to take. And yeah. Jesus said the, the when you talk about family members, Jesus said that a man's own enemy shall be those of his household. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes family members do go against you, especially when you, you believe in that. Amen. 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 Walk and walk. So would someone read uh, verse 11 to uh, 14? I read it. Thank you, Pastor. Okay. My sons, do not neglect your duties any longer. The Lord has chosen you to stand in his presence, to <laughs> minister to him, and to lead the people in worship. And present offerings to him. Man, I just got, that kind of got me, y'all. So, all right. It says, verse 12. Then these Levites got right to work from the clan of Kohath, Mahath, son of Amasai, Joel, son of Azariah, from the clan of Merari, Kish, the son of Abdi, and Azariah, son of Jehalel, from the clan of Gershon, Jehoa, Joa, son of Zimna, Zimma, and Eden, son of Joah, from the family of Elizavan, Shimri, and Jeel, from the family of Asaph, Zechariah, and Matania, from the family of Heman, Jehiel, and Shimi, from the family of Jedutham, Shemaiah, and Uziel. What did you say to the report? Uh, you can read 15 also, Fat Pastor, because you read a lot of names, so I... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> take a breath. Yeah. All right, here we go. These men called together their fellow Levites, and they all purified themselves. They, then they began to cleanse the temple of the Lord, just as the king had commanded. They were careful to follow all the Lord's instructions in their work. Mm. They were careful to follow all the Lord's instructions. Amen. I got to say that again. They were careful to follow all the Lord's instructions. Mm -hmm. Amen. And that's where we are as believers. We have to be careful yes. to follow all the mm -hmm. Lord, Lord's instructions. Amen. Because we'll falter if we don't. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the Bible, I, got to, I see you, Minister Jody. Uh, the, the Bible says that a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Mm -hmm. So when you want to do it, but you don't do it, you're not following all the instructions of the Lord. Mm -hmm. You're wavering in it. Go ahead, Minister Joe. I'm going to pretty much piggyback on what you just said, follow all the instructions, because when Pastor was reading verse 11, all of that should apply to us as well today, because it stood out strong, and you can just hear it echoing out when it says, do not be, it says, uh, it said, do not be negligent, and it says now. And it says right here, because the Lord has chosen. So to me, it's saying that we shouldn't be forced to stand. We shouldn't be forced to serve. And we should not be forced to be ministering and, and praising him as well. And we should not be forced to serve him. It should be something that we should do it because we know that God has called us. Does that make sense what I just said? Uh, no, it makes, I'm, I was waiting on you because, to finish. Because what I want to do is just put, just put the cherry on the top. If you are truly called, to me, this is just me talking, to me, you wouldn't feel so frustrated and you wouldn't be struggling to do God, what God has called you to do as a whatever you, your title may be. I'm going to say, say for instance to me, if I was a doorkeeper, I wouldn't struggle to greet people. It wouldn't be a struggle for me to say good morning. It wouldn't be a struggle for me to keep that, that face on, even though I had a tough time at home with my husband or wife or children. If I was truly called by God. Mm -hmm. Now I want to also add in to that. We will have our bad days. We will have our own self struggles. But if mm -hmm. God truly called you. I believe that we'd be able to put that mask on. So that we wouldn't make anybody else day worse. Mm -hmm. Who coming into the house. 
Mm -hmm. right. We wouldn't bring any burden upon them if we were truly called. Mm -hmm. uh, I think sometimes people might need, like pastors, you'll see, take a sabbatical because they need to refresh themselves or reconnect. They have, I mean, it's their, it could be their calling, but they need to. Exactly, I believe with that too. You know, rejuvenate or you, they need to, you know, because being a shepherd, you know, is a lot of work and you take on your people calling you, your people need you, and you take it on their burdens. And that way, so sometimes a pastor have to, you know. Come on. I want to say that if you were truly called by God to be a pastor, I believe that God's going to equip you with the strength and the courage and the strength that you need in order to endure those phone calls. Now, I believe that a pastor can take a sabbatical, but I don't believe it to be the sabbatical of sitting himself down. And uh, hold on, let me say it like this again now. I do believe that some pastors will sit themselves down if they're struggling. But I believe that they've already been talking with God and they're continuously searching in uh, uh, the word and the wisdom from God. I believe they, they're on their knees, they're praying, they're doing everything they need to do in order to, you know, to hear from God. I don't believe they're just, they're just throwing a towel that easy if they were truly called. Now, that's just me. And I do believe that me as a minister, if I want a sabbatical, I believe that I can have a sabbatical. Oh, oh true enough. But I'm going to go to the pastor and say, hey, pastor, this is where I'm feeling. Y'all making me hot as fish grease. I can't, I can't tolerate y'all no more. I need to sit it on down for a while. I don't need to teach. I don't need to preach. Because I don't want to be in a position where I'm in a pool pit where I'm saying something I ain't got to be saying. Because I'm out stirred up. Something ain't right inside right now. But I'm still seeking God. So, yes, I will sit. I, I do think I should sit down. But if I hadn't sit myself down, I need to make sure that I'm coming across that pool pit <coughs> with the Holy Ghost. <coughs> So, listening to everything you said, I want to go back to what the text said about Hezekiah and then address that. Hezekiah said in verse 10, now it is in my heart. Mm -hmm. You, When you were talking about, speaking about a calling, it doesn't just mean the pastor. It's everybody. See, I do what I do because I'm saved. It's everybody. See, my salvation is that important mm -hmm. to me that whatever God is calling me to do, I don't have a a, 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 a resistance to it. Exactly. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah. That's what I I'm do it because I'm so grateful exactly. that he saved me. Thank you. And the Bible says we are all called. All of us. So you don't have to be the priest. You don't have to be the... You, you could be the, the greeter, you could be the, the, the parking lot attendant, yeah, but it's if it's in your heart, you don't have a resistance. You should love what you're doing because if you're doing it as unto the Lord, that should bring joy, you know? And yes, if you're out of order, you should set yourself down because we know when we don't have it right. No one has to tell you. Because the Holy Spirit will convict you to let you know you don't have it right. And you should be able to say, well, you know what? You know, Pastor, I don't want to I don't want to bring the word because you know I haven't I, right I need to straighten some things out That's first. Right. Right. You know? Yeah. The Holy Spirit will speak That's to right. you. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have to no one has to point it out. That's right, Pastor. Because the Bible tells us, Jesus said that when the Spirit comes, the, the Holy Spirit, he will bring conviction on sin or he will convict you of sin so when you don't have it right if i've been raising anything other than something holy with my wife and it's been going on for a while I, there's no way i should come up and stand behind the pulpit and try to bring a word to you guys when i'm not right mm -hmm. and the holy spirit has convicted me of it but you know the bible says quench not the holy spirit and some people will do that even though they're getting the conviction, they still try to press through it just for the sake of right. doing it. Yeah. You were the only one with your hand. Oh, I thought you pointed out that. No, no. <laughs> but and, you know, people say you know, much given, much 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 given, much, much required. required. Mm -hmm. Now I do believe with that, believe that. But I'm glad you pointed out, Pastor, that from the day of salvation, we are accountable for our actions. And I often see people who in the, uh, or, or say they begin to point and say well you're supposed to be this way because you are the minister you're supposed to be this way because you're the pastor like they have no accountability no responsibility but i believe that's not correct like you said 
Once you are saved, you are now in the fold. Yeah. So you are accountable as well. Yeah. Everyone, every parishioner, every exactly. person sitting exactly. in the seat exactly. is accountable. accountable. We're all con accountable. Exactly. The same. Uh, so moving right on, uh, we're pastor stopped at verse 15. I'll read 16 through 20 and we could discuss it because there's some other things that jumped out. And because 21 through 24 is talking about the, some of the preparation and what have you. So let me read 16 through 19. And it says, then the priest went into the inner part of the house of the Lord to cleanse it and brought out all the debris that they found in the temple of the Lord to the court of the house of the Lord. I want to stop right there. This debris, remember, just in the chapter chapter before, uh, King Hazar had already taken out most of the stuff mm -hmm. and left all the garbage in there. Yeah. He had sold most of the the, the utensils, utensils and and all the gold and what have you out of the out of the temple, and he had sold it. But then what was left in there was all the pagan idols and gods and stuff. Mm -hmm. We remember that. Yes. Yes. Okay. okay. So now, and then it says here, found in the house, in the temple of the Lord, to the, to the courts of the house of the Lord. And the Levites took it out and carried it to the brook Kidron. Now they began to sanctify on the first day of the first month, and on the eighth day of the month, they came to the vestibule of the Lord. So they sanctified the house of the Lord in eight days, and on the sixteenth day, of the first month they finished. So for 16 days, they were working on cleaning the house of the Lord. Mm. For 16 days. That's every day. And then verse 18 says, Then they went into King Hezekiah and said, We have cleansed all the house of the Lord, the altar of burnt offerings with all its articles, and the table of the showbread with all its articles, Moreover, all the articles which King Hazai, Ahazai in his reign had cast aside in his transgression, we have prepared and sanctified, and there they are before the altar of the Lord. The bottom line, they were saying, what wasn't right, we took it out, and we restored it to how it's supposed to be. And so now come check it out. That's what they were saying to the king. Now come check it out. <laughs> Come on, Pastor. When you was reading that, was that the 18th? Did it begin to work early? Mm -hmm. Yeah, 18th. Which one? Where they cleaned the house. Oh, that, that began in verse 17. Right, 18. Then the Levi went to King Hezai and gave him this report. We have cleaned the entire temple of the, of the Lord. Also, and 17, what you would read from your verse, it reminded me of what we need to do. Mm -hmm. It kind of reminds me of fasting. Fasting. We need to clean these temples every day. Are you looking at my nose, Pastor? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you must be looking at my nose because you know what my nose said? What's now, that? if they took the diligence to clean the house of the Lord for 16 days, mm -hmm. We complain about three days or four days of fasting. Mm -hmm. And that's what fasting is designed to do, to clean the temple. And we complain about that. I got to give up food for, I can't watch my, man, you mean I got to, no phone for six hours? You know, <laughs> I can't get on Facebook all day. <laughs> But yes, yeah, yeah, absolutely right. Come on, Pastor. Not only in fasting, but things that they do in the world, they bring it to the kingdom of God, but they don't want to get rid of it. Yes. They don't want to stop. Don't yes. Want to. You're right. Amen. Yes. Amen. I agree. So, would someone read 20 to 25? Early the next morning, the king has gathered the city officials to stop rapping. Uh, to 25. Gathered, gathered the city officials and went to the temple of the Lord. They brought seven bulls, seven rams, and seven male rams as a burnt offering, together with 
Tell them that I go, as they sin often, for the kingdom, for the temple, and for Judah. The king commanded the priests who were descendants of Aaron to sacrifice the animals on the altar of the Lord. So they killed the bull, and the priests took, took the blood and sprinkled it on the altar. Next they killed the ram and sprinkled their blood on the altar. And finally, they did the same with the male lamb. This male, the male goat for the sin offering were then brought before the king and the assembly of the people who laid their hands on them. The priests then killed the goat as a sin offering and sprinkled their blood on the altar and made atonement for the sin of all Israel. The king had specifically commanded that this burnt offering and sin offering should be made for all Israel. King Hezekiah then stationed the Levites at the temple of the Lord with symbols. With symbols, what is that? Saturn? Liars. And heart. He obeyed all the commands that the Lord had given to King David through Glad, Gad, the king's seer, and the prophet Nathan. That's chapter 25. Now think about this. Everything that you read, this is a foreshadow of the blood that was shed for us. Yes. All of this, the get death, the, all of this blood was for the people. It was to sacrifice these animals for the people. Mm -hmm. And there is a sacrifice that happened after this for us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it was one lamb, and it was an unblemished lamb. And it was a perfect lamb, the lamb of God. Amen. And it was sacrificed for us. Mm -hmm. And so now we were cleansed from our sins because of that blood sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so now we're getting ready to get to some real good part of this in verse 26 on. Anyone else want to read 26 to uh, 26 to 31? Come on. Do these offerings in, in the uh, commentary here. It says the sin offering made by Hezekiah was, was one such sacrifice given to ask God to give this book. Unintentional sin. That's, 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 that's unintentional sin. Okay. And we could, like you just said, the blood of Jesus has forgiven us for unintentional sin. Then that we uh, can directly do. By purpose. I agree. Anybody else? Yeah, I just want to say that they are remembering the way that things were, but they were were they following the Lord's instructions. So that, that meant that they had to go into God's word to follow to see what, yeah. how to do it. And that's, you know, we could easily come into the house of God and I want to do this. I want to do this. The Lord telling me this. But what does the word of God say? Mm -hmm. We have to follow his instructions detail by detail. Mm -hmm. And the only way to do that is to go into God's word. Mm -hmm. And and listen to what he's telling you also by way of the spirit. Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I often wonder how many times oh I'm so outbreaking. <laughs> I often wonder how many times do we actually go before God to ask him about the decisions that we make in church. Or it could be with anything. How many times do we really as ministers and workers in the church about every single decision, do we really go and say, Well Lord, should I really put the curtains there? Well, Lord, should I really have this program? Well, Lord, should I really have this program like this? Every step of the way. I wonder, do we actually do that? Well, I, to be I honest with so. you, I, I, think, I think we do, but we have to remember now, let's, let's just keep it straight like it is right here in this church. Whatever pastor, God, pastor hears from God, it's about the vision and why God wants to take the church, the house, this house forward. Mm -hmm. When it comes down to the curtains, that's in the helps ministry. And in that helps ministry, they decide on, well, should the curtains be this way or should the curtains be that? And yes, you can pray about that. Uh, but that isn't one of the things that the pastor uh, should be burdened with. Does that make sense what I just said? Or... When I, when I use a curtain, I just, just, No, I know. I was I, I, I was using that. I, I was just trying to be on the surface without going deeper because we online. Okay. So, <laughs> so, 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 so
so uh, the, the the small things uh, those are uh, should be taken care of uh, within the body of Christ uh, at a different level. But as far as the vision and where we're headed and what have you, um, that's uh, where the pastor hears from the the shepherd hears from the from the Lord on that. So uh, we're at uh, verse. You left off at 26? Okay, I'll read that. Then the Levites stood with the instruments of David and the priests with the trumpets. Then Hezekiah commanded them to offer burnt offerings on the altar. And when he, the burnt offering began, the song of the Lord also began with the trumpets and with the instruments of David, king of Israel. So all the assembly worshiped singers sang and the trumpeters sounded and all continued until the burnt offering was finished and when they had finished offering the king and all who was present with his with him bowed and worshiped moreover king hezekiah and the leaders commanded the levites to sing praise to the lord with the words of david and of the asaph the seer so they sang praises with gladness and they bowed their heads and worshiped. Mm. Now, notice this now. Hezekiah is leading by example. And all the people, when they hear the praise and worship, now they're bowing down and worshiping the Lord. Something they hadn't done in years. Mm -hmm. In years. Verse 31. Mm. Anybody have anything? No, I just, I think that is an example of how we should be worshiping the Lord. Mm -hmm. You know, we should uh, use the symbols. You use everything that you have and give glory to God through your musical instruments, through your singing, through your dancing. That's the way we, I think this is an example. Mm -hmm. This is the way we should serve the Lord. And you should give it your all. You know, when you sing, you should sing with all that you have within you. You know, you're yeah, clapping your hands with all you have, you know, to even playing instruments with all you have. That's what I'm seeing from here. Mm -hmm. That's right. I got something to say to A lot of people don't recognize or don't know. When you sing or when you're giving praise to the Lord, whatever situation is going through, that will be broken. The Holy Spirit will come on you and you sing, you will get healed. But it's up to you. Because a lot of people do not want, don't have no time for them to praise the Lord. Or then don't know about it. But that brings that bring healing also on your body. Amen. Amen. I like that. I like that. Yes, I do too. Amen. Uh, I like the, what I feel you said too. Whatever you're going through, because it still reminds me of when Judah, back in Second Chronicles chapter 20 and 22, when they were getting ready to go to war, and they told the, the leaders to come and sing, mm -hmm. uh, those of Judah to come and step in the front to sing, and then they won the victory. Mm -hmm. That's like a, a, in our lives. When we're going through burdens or issues in our life, when we come and they're singing and lifting up holy hands, then yokes are destroyed, burdens are loose, those different things like that happen. Mm -hmm. You're absolutely right. It's it's in your praise that you receive, you receive from the Lord. It's in your praise. It's in your praise. Uh, I wanted to bring something out. Anybody else have anything? And, and I wanted to also say some people are actually afraid afraid to, I mean, you may have said that, some people are actually afraid to give it their all based on what they have said or what they've heard about the people may, that be, may be around them mm, and around them. Man. But see, you got to realize that when you open up your heart and give it all to God, you got to come into this into this church seeing it as a hospital where you're going to be healed. Mm -hmm. And see, a lot of us as Christians, we hinder the next person from getting their breakthrough because of our negative attitudes and behavior towards what worship is all about. Mm -hmm. Well, see, I, I'll be honest with you. If I raise my hand and I turn around in a circle and you hear me howl of glory, a shout in the middle of the worship, uh, then you could just say, he gone. <laughs> but I'm going to do that. Mm -hmm. Because with all that God has done for me, mm -hmm. I have to give him his praise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have to shout yes. and I have to jump up and down. Amen. Because it's not just a church thing for me. That's right. It's me knowing what God has done Amen. for me. Mm -hmm. That's where I am. Mm -hmm. Come on, Pastor. And this is not to crit criticize any church or any yeah, denomination yeah, or anything, yeah. but there are some that I've been in 
that if you start singing and raising up your hands, they look at you like, oh, no, 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 no. Why I walk you out? You know, they're like they're muzzling your praise, you know. You're muzzling my praise, you know. Y'all, they'll walk you out, you know. Yeah. But you, you, you're praising and worshiping the Lord. So maybe that's why some of these churches are not moving on. Yes. And I wanted to, I wanted to, oh, come on, Pastor. Cool. Do my hand back up. Oh, you need to start doing this. <laughs> that's what I need to start doing. That's cool. Hey, I, 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 we'll go with us. Go ahead, O'Keefe. I have something to say. Like what you said. When I was in the club, <laughs> dancing, God telling you, I've been there. I've been there. And the Lord came to me in the club because when I was going shooting, I would come home and talk to him. And I asked the Lord, it then dancing, it then dancing in heaven, and told me yes. And I said to him, from that day, I want to keep on dance for you. And I know nobody have to tell me it's dancing in heaven. Mm. If you don't want to dance your way, I know I want to dance my way. Mm. Mm. Oh, my Lord. Because if you dance it's in heaven. You don't want to go and take no vacation or whatever. <laughs> I want to go back to what, uh, what Julian has said one time that a lot of people say don't take all of that. And sometimes that's what shut people down. Mm -hmm. Don't want to pay. But I've, I've seen what, what, what Pastor Bowden was saying in other churches. A lot of people come from the dead churches. Mm -hmm. They come to a live church and they're scared to move. Mm -hmm. They've never seen it. Damn. And if you're like that, that's that's not the way to, to worship us. You have to just sit down and be quiet. Mm -hmm. And they come in and they 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 uh, uh what's the word I'm looking for? They feel ashamed. Yeah. They feel ashamed. Yeah. You know, some churches have actually taken the Holy Spirit out of the church. Yes, yes. And what you have then is when you, anytime you remove the Spirit of the Lord out of the church, mm -hmm. uh, then God is not in that house and you have uh, people dying on the vine. Mm -hmm. And when the, they're dying on the vine, that's because they've taken the presence of the Lord out of the house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so... The scripture says that when we gather together two or more, then the Lord is there. Yes. Mm -hmm. But when you start quenching the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. and you tell people it don't take all of that, mm -hmm. how do you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. See, my question is, is if God just healed me from cancer mm -hmm. and I'm shouting and jumping and praising the Lord yeah. in the midst of the, the praise and worship mm -hmm. for you to tell me, no, 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 no don't do that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you, you need to move on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and and I, I'm going to say it with respect, but you need to move yeah, on because yeah, yeah. you don't know what God has yeah, done for me. Come on. Yes. See, I come to church on Sunday, but you don't know that my son is out on the streets. Uh -huh, mm -hmm. uh -huh, yeah. uh -huh. And so now God delivers my son mm -hmm. from out there in that, in that uh -huh, environment. Yeah, about to and now he's he's safe. And I want to praise God for the deliverance. And you're going to tell me I can't do that? My Lord. You got a problem. And Come it's on. not with me. It's with the Lord. Ooh, yeah. Man. Oh, uh, Lord. Come on. I want to say one thing, too. Uh, I was sitting next to a teenager. And I'm going to call her name because she, we, me and her are all right. Tyra. She was saying to me on Sunday, she said, when she's not here on a Sunday, her day is a certain way. Mm. And she said, when I come to church, my day is good. It's great. Amen. And she said, you know, she said some other stuff. And I'm saying to myself, to hear a teenager say that. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was just so profound some of the things that she was saying because she was able to make uh, references to when and when not and how things go and when they don't go a certain kind of way. And actually, she was just giving them a little <coughs> and I'm like, oh, my God. And I, and I just kind of told her, you know, God is going to use you. Be prepared. I don't, know, I don't know if Amen. I was ministering uh, or if it was at Bible study. No, I, I think I was ministering, and I made this statement. When a, when a young person gives their life to the Lord, uh -huh. uh, it's and they're, yes, they have a difficult time. They don't have a difficult time, but it's difficult for them because of the pressure that comes in on them from their peers yeah. and society. Yeah. Yeah. So at a young age like that, we're all mature. 
we're all seasoned come on, come on. and we've dealt with a lot. But uh -huh. when a young person comes to the Lord yeah. and they're sincere about the Lord, the enemy is there mm -hmm. using many people mm -hmm. to get them to revert back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I commend every young person who stands mm -hmm. and fights that battle Amen. because yes, it is, yes. it's a battle for them as a yeah. young person. Yeah. Yeah. Because they're not as seasoned as us. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't have to learn how to say, talk to the hand. You, mm -hmm. you know, because the head ain't listening. All right. So, mm -hmm. anyway, but mm -hmm. I wanted to say this and also. I, I want to say, Pastor, it is difficult for them. Yes. Mm -hmm. It is. Yeah. It is. And so let me fin finish this up. And I yes, wanted sir. to say, as we as we finish this, mm -hmm. I wanted to, want you to notice something that King Hezekiah restores the temple and restores the worship for the nation. Mm -hmm. Within 30 days. Man. Within 30, 30 days. days. Within 30 days. So uh, you left off at verse 30, right? Yes. Uh, 31 says, Then Hezekiah answered and said, Now that you have consecrated yourself to the Lord, come near and bring sacrifices and thank offerings into the house of the Lord. So the assembly brought in sacrifices and thank offerings, and as many as were of willing heart, as many as a, a, a willing heart brought burnt offering and the number of the burnt offerings which the assembly brought was 70 bulls, 100 rams, 2,000 lambs. All these were for a burnt offering to the Lord. The consecrating things were 600 bulls, 3,000 sheep, but the priests were too few so that they could not skin all the burnt offering. Now, that, just think about that. They were so glad to get back to where they were in worshiping the Lord. They brought so much that they didn't have enough priests to prepare the offering. Hey. And it says right there, they had a willing heart. And when you have a willing heart to do what God has called you to, yes. you do whatever it takes so that God can be glorified yes. in what you're doing. With joy. Yes. Uh, with joy. You know, when you have a willing yes. heart, I don't have a problem with greeting you at the door. I don't have a problem with uh, picking up trash. I don't have a problem with cleaning the restroom. I don't have a problem with anything when it comes to doing what the Lord is calling us to. And this is a house of the Lord. Mm -hmm. This is a house of prayer. And so when we, whatever we're doing, we should do it with a willing heart. Yes. Amen. Amen. And so to finish this up, it says in verse 34, but the priests were too, full, too few so that they could not skin all the burnt offerings. Therefore, their brethren, the Levites, helped them until the work was ended and until the other priests had sanctified themselves. For the Levites were more diligent in sanctifying themselves than the priests. Wow. Notice before it says a willing heart. Mm -hmm. Now, the priests knew what they were supposed to have been doing, but you know how sometimes you just want to just drag around. Mm -hmm. That's what it says here. Notice it says that. It says the Levites were more diligent in sanctifying themselves than the priests. Mm -hmm. Seemed like the priests should have been. Yes. The, they had gotten out of habit of doing what they were supposed to do normally mm -hmm. in the house of the Lord. And when you get out of that habit, it, it, you're kind of reluctant to get started again. Mm -hmm. And that's that's what I find in that. Verse 35, also the burnt offerings were in abundance with the fat of the peace offering and with the drink offerings for every burnt offering. So the service of the house of the Lord was set in order. Then Hezekiah and all the people rejoiced that God had prepared the people since the events took place so suddenly. Mm -hmm. My Lord. So I'm going to turn this over to the pastor. Amen. 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 Pastor Terry, as always, job well done. Amen. That was awesome. Awesome. Amen. Awesome. You know what you just finished with too, and I this is something that I want to make sure that I never get, um, um, I guess, a part of, is doing things through routine and then making it become not yeah. as 
sanctified. You know, I'm all, I'm, we always do this. Thing. We always do this. Thing. And all of a sudden, you start losing the fire and the meaning of why you're doing it. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's what I'm thinking. The priest right there, oh, we always do this. Thing. We always do this. Thing. Oh, you know. This. But then you're supposed to still have the same zeal that you're supposed to have. Oh, God, I'm going to still do this here and give it with my all. I don't care how many times you do it. You should still have that same type of zeal. Yeah. And I think that's what the priests were having, too. They just was, was routine, routine stuff. Uh, so things that also stood out with me with this lesson was, this hit me, y'all. God is our source. Everything else is just a resource. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> Man, that hit it right there. You know, we got to remember that, y'all. That God is our source. I don't care what goes on in our jobs, y'all. We got issues yeah, in our job. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, people may be leaving. Uh, they may uh, get rid of the administrative staff and put a new staff in or whatever, whatever. God is still our source. Everything else is our resource. And God will still provide no matter what happens. He's still going to provide. Amen. That, that stuck with me, y'all. That, that hit me. And we need to teach that to our kids as well because that's a, a word that they can use. Amen. Amen. That's that's the I I think that's the reason why God told Moses, uh, uh, when you wake up in the morning in Deuteronomy, when you wake up in the morning, talk to your children about what God yes. has done. Exactly. When you walk with when you walk with them, tell them what you've done. Mm -hmm. When you go to bed at night before they go to sleep, yes. tell them what the Lord has done. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. So if you keep it on their mind, exactly. then they'll be aware. That's true, of what God and that's what Proverbs too yes. talks about it. Yeah, yeah. keep yeah. it on their. Keep it on their uh, bedpost or something like that. It says, keep it wherever they're going. They should be able to see it right there. Psalm 119 talks about it. Yes, Psalms 119. That's right. Right, it does. The and the lentils. Yes, doorposts and lentils. So every time they look around, they see it. They see it no matter where they're That was awesome. Yes. And like I'm talking, even when it comes to like McDonald's, I say, God give me the money for McDonald's. Yes. Yes. They should be able to see it everywhere they go. I tell you. You know, and y'all, we just continue to uh, be an example for our children. You yeah, know, we tell them yeah. this and tell them that, but if we're not doing it, they see what you, they listen, they hear more what you're doing than what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. see what I'm saying? They, they yeah. see what you're doing, you know, yeah. more than they are what you're, what you're saying. Yeah. So we got to continue, no matter where, no matter who's around, no matter what, if you're out in the public with your kids, they should still be seeing that you are an example. Exactly. You are living yeah, in the right, yeah. and you're giving the right example. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. All right, and y'all, just for our Country, continue to lift them up in prayer. You know, continue to pray for our leaders. Uh, like Sister Rhonda say, it's really hard for one person to try to do it. You know, but there are other people there in the in, in government. Even, I know we got a lot of corruption there, but there are some people, there are some men and women of God that are still there yes. and that are there for the right reasons. Yes. Exactly. They are there. So we got to pray for them. We got to continue to pray for our leaders. Amen. Amen. But awesome job, Pastor Terry. That was great. Yes. Great Amen. job. Great job. Amen. 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 Did everyone get an op have an opportunity to give? Yes, sir. Okay. Hey, Pastor. Yes. I'm sure you probably know. Can we put uh, our father-in-law on the list? Did you talk to Tyrone? Uh-uh. Okay, well, he's been missing for a yes. few it's hours. Tyrone's dead. Yes. Yeah, he told me this evening. I prayed. Yeah, oh yeah. God. When they and called Marvin me. said they went to um, his location. It showed up. But where his location is showing up at, he's not there. But his phone is dead. It's not coming on. Goodness. And y'all, just to let you know, Tyrone's dad, he's, yeah, you know, Alzheimer's. going through some dementia. Yeah, he's, yeah. you know, Alzheimer's and just, you know, I don't know if it's Alzheimer's. I'm not yeah. sure exactly. Okay. So he just, I mean, he's forgetting where he's at. You know, it's, it's a few people that's going through that type of thing. Mm -hmm. But we're going to keep uh, Mr. Elliot lifted up in prayer. His name is Don Elliot. Yeah. yeah. We're going to keep him lifted up in prayer. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my Amen. And then just the bereaved family also. We just, uh, Dr. J, I don't know if you know, we lost a, a former one of our, uh, from Progressive. Um, we call her Peaches. Um, she was one of the ushers there. She was one of the ushers there. And she had a sister named Chris Bacon. It's a bacon, one of the bacons. Uh, it's Chris Bacon's sister. But she was an usher over there. She's pretty young. She, she passed away. And we had another lady that was a musician in Galveston and educator. Her name was Carolyn Softly. I don't know if y'all know Carolyn Softly, but she passed away also. Just keep the bereaved family lifted up and proud. Amen. Yes. The kids, um, and the teachers at Odyssey, was killed yes. um, the other day. I think it was Saturday or Sunday in um, Mer the guy, the husband tried to tell, tried to commit suicide, but he ended up living as far as we knew, but she died. They have, I think, a six and an eight-year-old. My goodness. So, mm -hmm. Didn't hear about that in Galveston, yeah. They could, but she was in Texas City. She was in Odyssey in Texas City. Oh, Odyssey in Texas City. This was last week? 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, I heard it. It was on the news, yeah. 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 She helped with his um like his special his A R R or whatever special ed. Oh yeah. She oh, used to help and then she they moved to fifth her to fifth grade. But she and the kids there. witnessed it, right? The kids witnessed They're not for sure if the kids witnessed it, but they saw the bodies because I think they was in the car or something. Yeah. But they they saw them mom and dad. Bodies. I heard about that. They were in the back seat of the car, right? The parents or something. Yes, yeah, I heard that on the news. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. My goodness, y'all. So they're holidays. That's going on, boy. I tell you, little boy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's tough. But y'all, we're just going to keep them lifted up in prayer. Um, just continue to pray you for one another as well. Pray you for one another. Amen. This time, everyone will stand as we go to God in prayer. Father in heaven, first of all, Father, we just want to thank you for this Bible study. Thank you for Pastor Terry for doing a great job. And then once again, for uh, so many in the Bible study, that's also adding to the, the lessons. That whatever you're putting on their hearts and whatever you're putting in, Father God, they are sharing with others. And I thank you for that, Father God. Thank you for the way you set up this Bible study, Father God. We give you glory, honor, and praise. And Father God, for those that join us online as well, we pray that something was said also uh, to help them, Master. Through these tough times, Father, so much is going on through this different difficult season. Amen. It's a season of joy and peace, Father, but there's yet so much more that's going on also. So we're going to pray, Father God, for this family, uh, these uh, this, uh, mother and father, Father God, and these children that witnessed or will have to go through uh, this, uh, the death of the mother and then the dad, Father God. We're just going to pray for them, Master. Continue to bless them, comfort them, Father God. Oh, so much going on, Master. We just want to continue to just lift them up in prayer. Father God, for the bereaved family as well, we're going to continue to lift them up also, Father God. Those that have lost lovers, that you would comfort and keep them in your loving arms, Father. Master, you are God, and you never make mistakes, Father God. You're in control of all things, Father. We we stand on your word, Father God, and we just uh, continue to lift them up, lift one another up, Father God. And Master, through these tough times, also for those that are suffering right now, those that are without, those that have lack, those children, Father God, that... Uh, looking for a Christmas, Father God, we are praying, Master, that uh, these different groups and these different uh, uh, companies, dif- different uh, things that we're doing to give these children a good Christmas, Father God, we're just praying right now that we can give continually. Give even the more to make sure these kids have a good Christmas, Father God. And for those other family members, these mothers and fathers that are struggling with finances, Father, we're praying that you are the source, Father God. But you do have resources around also that these resources would give to help them also, Father God. Master, those are so many, Father God, so many that's going through through tough times, Master. And Father God, we're praying for our churches. We're praying for this nation, Father God, this nation. Father God, with these laws that's being brought up that's contrary to you, Master, we're praying that those that are responsible, that would be exposed, Father God, and that you would put men and women of God in leadership positions to lead this country, Father God, to get it back on track. Oh, God, we just want to thank you, Father, for this lesson on how Hezekiah did as a leader. Father God, and everyone else followed along, Father God. Well, let this country, Father, this United States of America, uh, let's make America great again. No, the way we're going to make America great again is going back to the Lord. Yeah. So, Father God, we're praying right now, Master. Yeah. Father God, we're just calling out America, Father God. In God, we trust. Yeah. One nation under God. Let us continue to say it and mean it and live it, Father God. We just want to say thank you, Father, for the offering that was given this evening, Father. We pray that it's used for the manner in which it was given, Father, to help someone, Father God, for kingdom building. We just want to say thank you, Father. We thank you. We give you glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest in the Bible that's now henceforth and forevermore. Let the church say, Amen. Amen. You are dismissed.